Amen. We serve a good God that loves us and wants to meet the needs in our lives, right? Amen. Amen. Glad you're here. It's a good day to be in God's house. Amen. It's a good day to be in God's house. Amen. Amen. Got to wake up and get started now together. We don't want to lose a moment. If we do, we don't get it back, do we? Amen. You're blessed to be here. I'm blessed to be here. And we're going to worship the Lord. Stand with us, if you will, and let's pray and start our service honoring him. Father, we're grateful for today, for our church, for our people, for a loving God, and for the privilege of all coming together just to worship you and fellowship with one another. We pray, God, as we sing that we lift it from our hearts and you accept it and it blesses you. We thank you for the opportunity to sing, the opportunity to worship. And God, as you bring forth the word tonight, let us listen with our hearts. Let us receive it and let it bless us and change us. So thank you for your goodness and thank you for your love and thank you again for the privilege of being here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I noticed twice, you, had to, you had to hear the preacher twice say, have you had a good day before we got much response. And maybe you didn't have such a good day, but I've got a good way for you to end it. Think about that soon and very soon, what? We're going to see the king and we're going to sing about it. that will be. I think it leads perfectly into the song.
were. <laughs> okay. Um, I love this song here. It's a wonderful song to go into worship. Father, as we stand here before you tonight, we, we think about giving you praise. And, of course, the greatest way we can do that is with our mouth. But, God, we give you praise also with our hands and our arms when we raise them before you. We give you praise when we stand in honor of you. We give you praise whenever we just come into your house and we meditate and we think about you and your goodness. There are just so many ways to praise you. And God, as we're gathered here tonight, in our own special way, we honor you with praise. You're the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and there's none other like you. You have done so much for us. You have blessed us. You have performed miracles. You died for us. We honor you with praise. And God, I look around and I thank you for the wonderful church you've given us, for the people that you've placed in it, and for your spirit that just dwells here. We honor you with praise. And God, we thank you that we're able to acknowledge you, that we are able to recognize that all things come from you, and that you work them all out to make us better. So for this wonderful music, for the wonderful songs, we thank you. God, now as we enter into the portion where we hear the word, we also thank you by faith ahead of time. Knowing the word is going to meet needs in our lives. So we tell you we love you and we thank you. And we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
I want to say again, it's good to see every one of you here tonight. The middle of the week where we get to take a break from the disaster of the world and come into the blessings of God. And uh, just bask here for a little while and enjoy it, however God brings it. So it's so good to see you here. Good to see Donna and Matt still right here with us, blessing us. So good to have y'all. Don't forget Saturday night prayer, 7 o'clock Saturday night. Sure wish you'd pray about being here. And if you pray about it and you obey God, you'll be here. Help us pray about one another. Pray about the services. Pray about sickness and illnesses in our church. Because we have a God that answers prayer if we can sincerely come to him and, and ask him in belief. So be here Saturday night, 7 o'clock. Come on in, find your place, sit down and pray for a little while, and then we'll pray together, and then we'll go home. But I ask you to come and pray. Pray for our services Sunday for God to bless us and give us a good time together. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, tonight Tommy is going to come in his crippled condition. Isn't that something going to come and he's going to bring the word to us? Neither rain nor snow nor sleet nor shine nor physical injuries can keep him from bringing forth the word of God. Amen. You listen to him now. Good evening. Good evening. What an awesome God we serve. Because if you'd asked me three weeks ago if I'd have been here tonight, I'd have said no. But even though Satan tried to keep me from speaking tonight, that wasn't in God's plans. God had a message that he wanted me to give to y'all, and he made sure that I had the strength and the ability to get here to do it. And I give him praise and glory for all things. Let's have a word of prayer. We thank you, Father God, once again for your mercy, your love, your saving grace, dear God. We thank you for the privilege to be able to come to your house to worship you and to praise you and to give you the honor that you deserve. We pray, Father God, that you would just use me tonight, dear God, to use me as you would want me to speak as a vessel, dear God, and that everybody would hear your words and not me. I pray, Father God, that you would just move me out of the way and have your way in this service. Bless each one that's come out tonight in a mighty way. In Christ's name I pray, amen. amen. I've been studying quite a bit. and If you've never had to speak, I don't know how Brother Danny does it on a regular basis. It's hard because you pray and you study and you pray and you study and uh, you know, you think you, you know where God wants you and uh, you think you got a handle on it, and then he says, no, nah. no, nah. that ain't what I want you to pray, uh, preach about or speak about. I'm no preacher by no means, don't claim to be, but I love the Lord. And most importantly, he loves me. And tonight, with his help, I'm going to talk to you about prayer. You know, uh, Brother Danny alludes to everybody coming on Saturday night and pray because we have a, a wonderful prayer on Saturday night. Prayer is something that if we all would be honest with ourselves, we're lacking in. Uh, reading the Bible is probably one of them areas that we're lacking in. And, you know, when we look at the Bible and, and what goes on and what the Bible says, uh, when the disciples was up in the upper room, they were all in one mind and one accord praying. Could you imagine what would happen in this church and in this town if just a few people that's in this room could come together with one mind and one accord? We could set this town on fire. We could set the nation on fire. 
But our problem is, it's hard to get everybody together. I don't know how they did it. You know, they, God had to be there with them. Because it's hard to get everybody on the same sheet of music, no matter what you do. It's just hard to do. Because we're all individuals. We're so much different. Everybody's got a mind of their own. Um, I'm going to be reading out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm going to start in verse 16. Uh, it says, Rejoice evermore. You know, you, I, I thought about that. That's, that's amazing. Rejoice evermore. I can honestly say without hesitation or reservation, there's been some times in the last three weeks I have not rejoiced. But you know what? We're supposed to. Through trials, it doesn't matter what comes up, we're supposed to be thankful to God and we're supposed to praise Him and give Him the honor and the, and the glory. Because it doesn't matter what happens to this old body because it doesn't matter no way. It's just dust. What matters is my soul. And for my soul to feel like I'm connected with God, there's a few things the Bible says we need to do. Reading His Word, praying is two of them. Prayer is probably the most powerful weapon besides God's own Word that we have in our arsenal. And we're good about praying when we need something. You know, uh, but the Bible says, you know, Verse 17 says, pray without ceasing. Well, that's a difficult one. How do you pray without ceasing? You know, you, you got everything going on in the world. People that's got young kids getting them ready for school. People going to work. You know, you just got, how do you pray without ceasing? That's why God gave us the Holy Ghost in our spirit. When we're, when we're not able to pray, He prays for us. With words that we cannot even comprehend. But we should constantly, somewhere in our mind, have the Lord on our mind. And what He wants for us to do on our mind. And I think that's what it means when it says pray without ceasing. Because if, you're, if you've constantly got Jesus on your mind and what He has for you and what He wants you to do, your day's going to go a lot better Satan ain't going to have enough time to get in there to mess with you because your mind's constantly on the Lord, so he can't get in there to you because he's not going to come where the Lord is because no, he knows he's not welcomed. So if you fill your mind and your time with the Lord, then the Lord's going to be there. Satan ain't going to want to be there. Verse 18 says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And everything give thanks. That's another tough one, ain't it? How do you thank God when you can't get up out of the bed? How do you thank God, you know, when uh, you don't have enough money to pay the rent or you can't pay your car payment or there ain't no groceries on the table and you got little kids to feed? That's a difficult one. But the Bible says we're supposed to thank God for everything, even the small things. You know, I have got where I, before I get out of the bed, I say a little prayer. Might not mean much to anybody else, but to me, it starts my day. I have found since I started doing that that my day goes better. I'm not saying I don't have difficulties because I have difficulties and I have problems, but it just seems like the day goes a lot better when I started off with the Lord. And I think if each and every one of us done that, our days would be a lot better. Not to say that we're not going to have no trouble because the Lord said we're going to have trials and tribulations. They're coming. You might as well get, get ready for them. Getting saved and accepting Jesus as our Savior doesn't stop that. If anything, He tests us to see where our faith is, to make sure that our faith is where it's supposed to be. So He puts those in our lives to see how we do. You know, uh, I used to hate school because I hated tests. The best test they ever had in school to me was recess. They wanted to test to see how fast you could get out there. I thought that was a good test there. But uh, nobody likes tests. But you know what? We all have, we face tests. We face trials in life every day. And all it is is Satan trying his best to do what he does best, and that's to lie, steal, and destroy. 
That's all he cares about. And God allows those tests to come in our lives so that we can grow in our faith and our strength in him. Because if we have the faith and the strength that we need, we're going to do the praying, we're going to be in the Bible, and we're going to be where we need to be. So when Satan attacks us, we're going to have every tool we need to defeat him. And, I, I, you know, that's, that's amazing to me. The Bible says in verse 19, quench not the spirit. Well, there's another good one. I, I guess it seems the Lord wants me to take each verse and, and say something about it, so y'all just bear with me. I think we got to whoever got to be at work at 6 o'clock in the morning, we'll get you there. Uh, quench not the spirit. You ever wonder what that really means? You ever been in a church service and it just seemed like the Spirit was flowing so good and all of a sudden something just caused it to go away? Telephone rings. I know Brother Danny's talked about it before cutting your phones off. I remember the day when people didn't have phones. You didn't have to worry about a phone ringing in church because there wasn't no phones in the church. And the only phone there was in the church was in the office and nobody heard it when the preaching and the praying and the singing was going on because it was somewhere else. You know, we've allowed Satan to bring all these devices in our lives that quench the Spirit. People bring their cell phones in and you look around and they'll be playing their game, reading their emails, whatever. You know, I guess we all probably can say we've been guilty of looking at our phone when we ought not have been looking at our phone. But wouldn't it be amazing if you could come to church one time in the near future and everybody in the church left their phones in the car or at home and we could come in and we could praise the Lord and you could feel the Spirit and you knew the Spirit was flowing freely and Brother Danny would just be filled with the Holy Ghost and this place would be set on fire. Now, you're talking about a meeting. We could have a meeting. But you can't have a good, hardcore, Holy Ghost meeting if something or somebody allows Satan to get in their way and quench the Spirit. So we have to be careful. If we really want to serve the Lord, we've got to be careful when we come in God's house. Because this is God's house. It says Kettle Creek out there on the sign, but this is God's house. You know... If we come into God's house to worship God and to praise God and do what we're supposed to do, we're not going to want the Spirit to be quenched if God allows it to come into the church with us. Actually, we should bring it in with us when we come in the door. You know, Brother Danny's got on to me several times because I, I love to make people smile and laugh, and, and sometimes I like to cut the fool. And he made his makes a comment, and he's made it before, about in the back when we be praying, and I'm glad he does because sometimes we need to be reminded. It's time to get serious. It's time to get serious about God and God's work. And I'm afraid I haven't been serious like I need to be, and I believe if everybody would take a check of their own lives, they could honestly say, we as a church are not serious about God's work and what God wants us to do. And I believe that we're in the end times. No doubt in my mind, I've heard it all my life, and I know people that's a lot older than me that heard it all their lives. But you can look at the signs that's in this world today, and you can see it. They're, they're everywhere. And, it, you know, the Bible tells us in the end times, there'll be... You know, you'll know it's coming. You won't know when it's coming because it's going to be like a thief in the night. My time may end tonight before I get home. Might end right now. I don't know. That's in God's hands. But what I do know that I've been slack when it comes about, about doing God's work and doing what God wants me to do. And that's my fault. And one of the places I fall short is reading the Word and staying in prayer and seeking God. We have got to seek God. God doesn't need me. He can get anybody to do what I do. I need God. I need Him way worse than He ever needed me. But He loved me way more than I could ever love Him. 
verse, I'll try to get through this. I, verse uh, 20, despise not prophesying. prophesying. <coughs> you know, people don't prophesy like they used to. I remember years ago going to churches and they'd have Holy Ghost meetings and somebody would prophesy or somebody would speak in tongues and somebody would interpret it, you know, and you could just feel the Spirit of the Lord. And if John was running back there hitting the wall, nobody noticed it. They didn't care because they was allowing God to have freedom in the church and the Spirit to have freedom. Nobody worried about Sister Sue that fainted over there in the Spirit, fell out in the Spirit. You know, there was always somebody around who'd put a blanket over her if she was wearing a dress or something. But you was focused on what God was doing in your life and what God had for you. And if we focus that way, then we don't worry about what somebody's doing to the right of us or behind us or in front of us. We don't worry about that because our mind's on the Lord and what He's got for us. When Danny's preaching, I have tried my hardest and I'm getting better, I think, to focus on Him and to really listen, to intensely listen to what He says. And sometimes it's hard. I won't just tell you right off the bat, it is hard. Because there will be something that will cause you to lose your attention span. And it's nothing but Satan. You don't realize, but Satan come in the door when you come in the door. He's got his little pet peeves that he uses that certain things that will cause you to lose your attention span to hear God's Word, and he uses them. It don't necessarily have to be a cell phone ringing. It can be, hey, did you forget to cut off the TV? Or, hey, let me ask you a question. You ever been praying and somebody tapped you to interrupt you? And you think, oh, my God, you know? Couldn't you see I was praying? That's what you want to say, but nobody says that. You, but you feel like turning around and saying, please, give me a break. You need to be doing what I'm doing. I'm trying to pray. Be quiet. Leave me alone. Let me have my time with God. And that's what we have on Saturday night. That's why Saturday night is so important. You know, Wednesdays is supposed to be prayer meeting. And I think that's why God wanted me to bring this message tonight. This is supposed to be prayer meeting. How many times on Wednesday night do we come in here and pray for each other? How many times on Wednesday night do we come in here and say, you know what, tonight's prayer meeting. Let's all gather up down here at the altar and pray for one another. If there's somebody that needs special prayer, let's call the elders and the deacons of the church up here and let's pray for that person. Let's anoint him with oil. That's what the Bible says we're supposed to do. If there's any among you who is afflicted and sick, whatever, you call the elders of the church, have them to anoint you and pray for you. I'm afraid that our prayers are not being answered the way we want them to because our prayers don't have the power they should have because we're not doing what we're supposed to do to make the prayers have that power. If we're, if we're doing what we're supposed to do and we're praying honestly from the bottom of our heart, I'm talking just giving it all your soul. you giving it all you got. God knows that you just poured out your soul. We can make a difference in this church. And it'll make a difference in our lives. We have so many needs in this church. There's so much sickness in this church. So many people's had surgery in this church. I could name them. It'd probably take me two hours to name all the people that's got hurts and pains and sickness and the people that's had surgeries in this church. And God has showed us over and over miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. And we still have a tendency not to pray and thank Him and believe that He can do it again. You know, when, when we look at Brother Danny and his situation... Uh, God put Tish right where she needed to be for a reason. That's so Brother Danny could get what he needed. Had Tish not have felt in her heart and her body that she needed a heart cath because something was wrong. That was God's Spirit talking through Tish because He knew He needed the help. Yes, she needed the confirmation that, yeah, I'm going to be okay, my heart's okay. 
But what a relief for her to know that God used her to save him and to get him where he needed to be. That's a miracle. That didn't happen by chance, not by accident. You're not here by chance or by accident. God could have called you home or you could have gotten a car wreck. There's a million things that could have kept you from here tonight. But God wanted you here for a reason. And that reason is because there's something in this message for each and every one of us. Every one of us can get something out of a message. Sometimes Brother Danny steps on my toes so bad I want to call him and say, Look at him, Bubba. Can you get off me just a little bit? But that's when the Lord reminds me, you needed it. You lucky he only got on your toes. I wanted him on your head. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we, we need to really look hard and focus on where our life is with the Lord. And are we doing what we need to do to be the best servant child of God? Because we're children of God. We've been adopted in, but we're a child of God. I have the same rewards that anybody that was born an Israelite has. You know, I have the same thing that, uh, I'm, I'm like, you know, I get everything. <laughs> I didn't have to give anything but to say, God, forgive me of my sins. And these are my sins and I repent of my sins and come in my life and, and use me and take me and mold me and make me the person you want me to be. That's all I had to do. That's all it cost me. That's all it cost any of us. But how many of us really on a daily basis remember how awesome God was to come to us and allow us to be one of His children. I mean, that's pretty awesome. I mean, it's just ama it amazes me that He would take something like me that was in the bottom of the pit, the sorriest of the sorriest, and lift me up and say, I love you. And I will save your soul. And I will make your life different. And if you'll allow me, I will use you. That somebody else can get out of that hole down there. That won't go to hell. Because it may be something you say. Or something I say. Or something that you do. That you never know you've done. Maybe something small as far as opening the door for somebody at Walmart or somewhere else. Or just saying hey and smiling and, and just letting people see Jesus on you. That might be all they need to be saved. That might be that little thing that keeps them from burning in hell. We need to be careful what we do, what we say, where we go. I love to cut the fool and, I, you know... God's really been dealing with me about that too. I think when I come through their house, when I come through them doors back there, whether I come there or there or wherever, whenever I come into this church, I need to be serious about wanting to hear God's Word and what He's got for me. And if I can't do that, there's no sense in me coming. But the Bible clearly tells us Forsake not the assembly of yourselves together. You know why he says that? Ronnie may say something that I need to hear. But the only time I see Ronnie is at church. Well, how can Ronnie say that to me if me and him both don't come to church? If me and him don't gather together in this atmosphere? You may have something for me that the Lord's been telling you, hey, you need to tell Tommy this. I ain't telling him that, Lord. But then we get together at church and the Lord prompts you to tell me and you tell me. Whatever it is, doesn't matter. If God tells you to do something, do it. Because if you don't do it, guess what? I serve an awesome God. He'll find somebody that will. And you just lost a blessing. You lost a major blessing. When God has something for you to do, there's a blessing tied to it. Regardless of what it is. If it's to go to Brother Danny and say, hey, let me take your trash out. Whatever. Hey, does somebody need to help clean the bathrooms? You know, we, we got a lot of work that has to be done around this church. A lot of work. And I, 
Unfortunately, I haven't been able to do the things that I've been doing. But I'm old school. Mama taught us if you walk by and see something needs doing, just do it. Don't ask if it needs doing. Don't ask if you can do it. If it needs doing, do it. If you see a piece of trash blowing around out there in the parking lot, don't say, well, somebody else will get that. Pick it up. If you go to the social hall and there's paper and junk all over the place, something needs cleaning, clean it. There's nary one of us any better than the other one. We're all the same in God's eyes. He loves every one of us the same. He offers every one of us the same. Doesn't matter if you have two cents in your pocket or $50 million. You're the same in God's eyes. You're on the equal ground. So we need to start acting like that, especially with each other. Animosity is one of the things that kills a church. You know, pride. I can't believe she said that. Let me go tell so-and-so what so-and-so said. It's everywhere. Everywhere. And we're probably all guilty of it. Let me tell you what Billy Yeomans did. Well, it ain't none of your business what Billy Yeomans did. If I seen it, and it ain't none of my business to go tell his business, is it? Is it my business to tell his business? And it's not yours to tell mine. We're all sinners. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. There's none perfect except one, and that was Jesus Christ. And we all strive daily, daily. Some of us need to do it minute by minute to be a better person and to live for God. That's what I do. I do it minute by minute. And I'm going to tell you, these days I have, I have, whew, I wonder why God would even love me. It's like, I can't believe that come out of my mouth. I was just lucky there wasn't nobody else around to hear it. And it wasn't a cuss word, Brother Danny. Brother Danny mentioned stop signs the other day in his sermon. He seen me the other day going to Ronnie Coswell's. Didn't expect to see Brother Danny. I don't do anything that I'm ashamed of for anybody to see. If I do something that I'm ashamed of, I'm ashamed of it because I know God don't want me to do it. You know, regardless of what it is. If you see me do something, I don't try to hide nothing from nobody. I don't hide who I am. You either love me or hate me. Doesn't matter one way or another. The Bible says you got to love me, so all y'all got to love me. Y'all have no choice. But, you know, he said, uh, I seen you run that stop sign. Thank you. I said, I'm sorry. I had that old, just couldn't hardly walk. And I'm thinking, what stop sign did I run? What stop sign is he talking about? He didn't tell me. God told me. God told me what stop sign it was. And God said, you know what, son? I put stop signs in your life every day. Stop. Don't go there. Stop. Don't say that. Stop. Watch what you're doing. Stop. Stop. It's up to you whether or not you listen. So how many stop signs you run today? Good question, right? I thought that was, I thought that was an excellent analogy. We, I know God had to give it to him. Now, I don't know that, but I'm pretty sure he did. I guess he's smart enough to come with that by himself, but I can tell you, stop and think about it. Stop, think, pray about it, read about it before you open this and spit it out. Wouldn't we all be in a lot better place? Hmm? Let me tell you, it's, it's, it's difficult. Anybody that says it's not difficult, they have already gone to heaven. Because if they're breathing, life's difficult. But being a Christian is worth the reward. Doing God's will is worth the reward. Because I tell you, there ain't nothing I'd rather do in this world but to talk about my Jesus. 
I'm a nobody wanting to tell everybody about my Jesus. And I hope you've got something out of this message tonight. Before we close, I talked to Brother Danny about it. And I'm going to ask for all the deacons and Brother Danny to come up. And anybody that needs special prayer, we're going to anoint them and pray for them. But I'd like for the whole church to come up so we can pray as a church, one for each other and for the church, and for each one that has a need in the church. But if you have a special need that you want God to touch, then we're going to do what the Bible says, and we're going to call the elders of the church, and we're going to anoint you and pray for you. Now, if we did that for everybody, I'm quite sure it would take all night. Uh, I personally feel like I need anointed and prayed for, so I'd like to be first. But we'd like to pray collectively for everybody. But if somebody has a special need and they want Brother Danny and the deacons to pray for them, if y'all come up and let us know, then once they've prayed for me, we'll pray for y'all, and then we'll pray together as a church, and I'll turn it back over to Brother Danny.